Good afternoon, everyone. It's Weather United here presenting another weather forecast for you all as Thanksgiving could be a little dicey for some locations, especially for Thanksgiving weekend. We could be looking at a very dynamic system, bringing the threat for heavy rainfall, strong winds, and heavy snowfall for the Northeast. Now, if you're new and you really like the detailed weather content, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. Let's get this out to as many people as we can possible, as this system could be pretty impactful for the eastern half of the U.S. So now, starting off with the European model for Wednesday morning, November 23rd, 2022, here on our precipitation forecast, we can see if you're going anywhere on Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, road travel looks pretty good for the most part for California, for the Deep South, if you're in the desert southwest, if you're in the eastern half of the U.S., even the Great Lakes looks pretty good for the most part, of the exception if you're in northern Idaho, portions of Montana here, where there is going to be a winter storm that's going to bring in some moderate to heavy rainfall and snowfall, and that's the same system that is going to drop southward here and bring a pretty epic storm for Thanksgiving weekend of the 26th through the 27th, and even on Friday, the day before the weekend, look Looks to be pretty rough so let's kind of fast forward this so here's a look at Thanksgiving morning, you can see a little bit of snowfall there over Minnesota, over northern Wisconsin. If you are in the Dakotas, we're talking some light flurries, nothing too substantial. Some colder air filtering in on the backside of the system. And then throughout Thanksgiving, if you're getting dinner on the plate a little earlier, it could be pretty rough there um, for your Thursday afternoon. And then continuing into, say, um, Friday, look at this. Then the big guy gets going here. The dynamics coming all into play. We get the deep trough. We get the a colder air advection, warmer air advection out ahead of it. And then look at all that moisture. We're talking some light to moderate rainfall, some thunderstorms that could be severe at times, and also some gusts winds but more importantly by Saturday morning look at that snowfall freezing rain sleet there for the extreme northeastern portion of New England of the Northeast, including for southern and southeastern Canada there, southern Quebec, southern Ontario, Canada, we're talking some moderate to heavy snowfall, some strong winds, so blizzard conditions are a possibility. We can even see some lake effect snow on the back side of this system over Michigan, over Buffalo, Watertown, you've seen too much lake effect snow this year or this November already. You could be looking at more before November ends. And then that system is out of here by the time we get into, say, Sunday, even into Monday. Going all the way out here on the European model as this is currently rendering, you can see some lake effect snow kind of on the back side of the system all the way through the 28th of November. Then the pattern changes. We could be looking at more stormy weather back west, rain, wind, heavy snowfall for the mountains, and yeah, that sort of deal. Then the pattern looks to be a little more quieter by the latter part of Thanksgiving weekend. Now looking at the Canadian model, this is pretty interesting because these two models, the um, Canadian is notorious of not being super accurate for the most part, but in this case, it is really accurate. So for Wednesday morning, we can see there's a system really drying, less moisture with it to begin with, but don't let that fool you because by uh, Thanksgiving, we can see a little bit of snow there for the Great Lakes, some moderate to heavy rainfall for the Ozarks, such as Tennessee and Kentucky, and then eventually by, say, Friday into Saturday, there's your system there really setting up pretty nicely. Moderate to heavy rainfall, strong winds, very similar to the European model. Really not much uh, di diversion between those uh, um, these models. And then, of course, going all the way into the latter part of the weekend, Look at that snowfall. Massive snow producing system on the Canadian model run here for today. And then, of course, same old deal. Lots of snow and rainfall for the Pacific Northwest, including for California, by the latter part. Now, one more model I do want to run through really quickly is a GFS model. This is pretty inaccurate. I'll tell you what right now. What you're about to see will be like, what the heck? Where's our system? Where is it? So let's take a look at it. All right, so this look at Thursday, 
nothing much just a little bit of rainfall for the deep south and whoa there's friday where's our snowstorm gfs where is it it's gone it's not even here on saturday barely anything for the northeast so i don't know the gfs has a history of just going wonkers sometime and in this case it's pretty wonkers it's not showing anything while the european and the canadian model are still showing that storm over the last couple of days for the northeast so i'm probably leaning towards the canadian and the european model in this model forecast cycle because the gfs i don't know i don't know what has happened to it but it's not really accurate this morning or this early afternoon so snowfall totals for the extreme northeast not particularly significant on the european model but i mean if you go into canada southern quebec southern ontario that's where you're going to find the most snow fall for the weekend so you can be seen as much as possibly one to two feet of snow the two feet very isolated roughly between about a foot of snow or more in many locations if you're in northern wisconsin portions there of minnesota and iowa you could be seen as much as three to five inches of snowfall with some areas maybe seen up to seven inches on this model and then of course for the higher elevations for west virginia and portions there of the appalachians you could see as much as about six inches of snow on the canadian model run very similar output here we're looking at about uh three to six inches of snowfall from say kokomo indiana all the way into into ohio into michigan into pennsylvania take note of that lake effect snow we're going to see a little bit more of that so you could see as much as one to two feet of snow in those lake effect snow prone areas and of course southern ontario and quebec canada you could be seen as much as about 10 to 15 inches of new snowfall now what's going to cause this system to be fairly dynamic you may be asking well here's a look at the dynamic tropopause potential temperature in kelvin don't even ask me what this actually exactly means all it really means is how dynamic is the atmosphere for this system to really explode so let's kind of just shoot through this very quickly and so we can see here is our trough this is our little uh nugget here our little uh pinch to the flow that's gonna drop out of the north and then look at this by say thursday night into friday the system really becomes dynamic we have this trough really pinched off here clearly evident here over the great lakes down across texas Again, this is what's going to help to advex some of the moisture. We're going to see barrel clinic ascent along the barrel clinic zone. And so that's going to help increase the moisture advection out ahead of the system. And then look at this. Look how dynamic that system is all the way from the southeastern u.s into the northeast into the great lakes that is what's going to cause problems rain wind and snowfall for the higher elevations and yes there could be some um, a general risk for thunderstorms out of this system and then that moves out of the area by the time we go into sunday and even into monday let's take a look at that jet stream really quick so this is what it's going to look like here on the 500 millibar flow um chart this is at about 18,000 feet above the surface and so you can see there's your bowling ball um, trough that's going to be over the um the upper midwest over the great lakes even extending into tennessee and take note of that flow around that that's very dynamic that's going to bring in the strong winds and the dynamics that we need for a winter storm and then that's going to be moving into the northeast by sunday and even into monday and out of here by the time we go into the early part of next week so now there's going to be a low level pressure response with this because we have divergent flow aloft so we're going to see the gusty winds really increasing with this so we can take note of that by saturday we have a barrel clinic deepening um, surface slow at about 979 millibars over new york and that is because we have a lot of divergence a lot of dynamics out ahead of this um winds are going out like this aloft we're pulling in below it and that's going to allow some deepening with the surface flow the dynamics are coming in hand we got cold air coming in on the back side of this we've got warm air moving in from the south and that's going to lead 
to me to believe we're gonna have a very dynamic system at least on the european model but when you take a look here at our uh, canadian model also a little bit more dynamic because it indicates that the trough is going to be a little deeper to begin with and so it's thinking that maybe this is going to be a little stronger than what the european model is showing but either way it's going to be a wintry mess for some locations especially for southern ontario and quebec canada especially for friday into saturday it could be very rough going if you're doing any traveling uh, for Black Friday. It could be very rough, could be very dicey. But if you're in the Midwest, if you are in the Deep South, as well as the Four Corners for Black Friday and for Thanksgiving, looks to be pretty good for the most part, of the exception of maybe the Pacific Northwest where another storm could be arriving. But anyways, if you did enjoy this video, please consider sharing this with their family and friends on social media, everyone. Let's get the word out to a lot of these folks because this is going to be impacting your Thanksgiving travel. It could end up being that way and this could impact significantly on your Black Friday shopping by the end of this week. So make sure you do share this, get the word out to people and also subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit that like button for more updates on this system. I'm probably going to have more videos coming out this week since uh, my grandpa is getting really, really much better. He's doing a lot better. And so I'll probably have a little bit more time to keep you all up to date and up to speed on the weather this week since I'm barely not doing much other than keeping you all updated. But anyways, thank you all for watching and I love you all so much.